In February of 1945, a young Father William Tracy packed three bags, leaving his first parish in Ireland for Seattle. Changing trains in King's Cross Station, he put his first two bags on the train, turned to get the third, only to find that the train's doors were closed and the train was pulling out of the station. A kindly station employee told him to come back after midnight, but not to hope too much. I deeply appreciate that Father Tracy was willing to start on that journey, knowing there would be risks that he could not foresee and blessings beyond his imagination. Father Tracy embodied courage. Father Tracy engaged in pastoral care of many people while in Seattle. He once prayed with a man struggling to breathe, fanning him with a copy of the newspaper until the man could sleep. His own time in a hospital as a youth taught him what it feels like to struggle to breathe. Father Tracy embodied compassion. He accepted, with some trepidation, his bishop's request to be on a TV show with Rabbi Levine and a Protestant pastor. He was willing to be challenged by their questions and perspectives. He was willing to learn, to change, and to grow, even until his last days at 103. Father Tracy embodied curiosity. As the executive director of Paths to Understanding, the inheritor of the Tracy Levine Center, I met with Father Tracy almost every month for the last five years. I experienced repeatedly his courage, curiosity, and compassion. He would be moved to tears about the suffering of human beings and the creation itself. He longed for a day when the whole human family would recognize each other as human, as a part of each other. He told me to continue the work that he and the rabbi had started and to trust that God would be with us on our journey of risks and blessings. We will certainly try. In 1972, he celebrated the Mass in Jerusalem with a cup bought for him by Rabbi Levine. Before the holy meal, he shared the peace with those gathered, Catholics, Protestants, and his beloved friend, the rabbi. He saw there a banquet of love, washing away some of the terrible sins of anti-Semitism and religious bigotry. He saw a pledge of a new and better life when members of the human family can stand together in love. He saw another seed of hope that we could reach out to each other with arms outstretched to embrace the whole human family and bridge the gaps between us. After midnight in 1945, Father Tracy came back to King's Cross Station with a slim hope for finding his bags and travel papers. The doors on the train opened. His bags and papers were there. And so he could continue his journey toward Seattle, toward us, and all that he would find here. Father Tracy is now taking another journey a journey to our common creator who gave him as a gift to all of us and an example for us. He once quoted a poem of one of his friends, Sister Patricia, who wrote about the death of a friend. I've adapted this poem now to refer to our beloved friend, Bill. He will live in the hearts of the friends he made and be known always for the foundation he laid. Because goodness and fairness never die. They go shining on like the sun in the sky. Just as honor and truth endure forever, death is powerless to destroy or sever. So his gallant soul has taken flight into a land where there is no night. He is not dead. He has gone on to a brighter, more wonderful dawn. All of us at Paths to Understanding, and we know all of you, are grateful for the life and leadership of Father William Tracy. We are shaped by the courage, compassion, and curiosity he and Rabbi Levine embodied. 
may we all accept as he did the call of the divine to pack our bags for the sake of love, to face risks we cannot foresee, and to find blessings in and with all the human family. Blessings beyond our imagination, until of the words of the poet, a brighter and more wonderful dawn shines on us all. We thank you, our creator, for the gift of our friend Bill. May he rest in peace and power. Thank you.